How's it going guys and welcome back to another Highlander demo review. We're taking a look back at season 14 of ETF to Well. This is the Premiership Division, my team's strong opinions and of course it's my point of view uh, playing the Medic class. And today we're going to be looking at CP Steel. I always like to refer to this map as the, uh, the Marmite of TF2 maps. Marmite slogan in the UK has always been uh, you either love it or you hate it and I think that same rule applies to steel. There are people who absolutely love this map because of the fact you have to be very tactical and very team based around it while a lot of other people hate it because of its complexities to do with the changing spawns and the different routes. But today we're going to be looking at the week 3 game. Let's get started with the demo shall we? We're starting on defense and we're just we, uh, just setting ourselves up. This was against a team called Lucrosa um, in season 14 they finished I believe it was fourth so they didn't get relegated but they didn't get into the playoffs either so we're just kind of like you know a, pr a pretty decent team and it's a map that can go either way the thing with steel and what's something that's said all the time on casts is that you know supposedly weaker teams can cause big upsets against uh, the, the supposedly larger teams so it's a map that can go either way if you get a good a good med drop or something like that you can really just kind of snowball it through um, so you always have to be aware no matter who you're playing um, and be prepared so um, this was like an interesting strat ball wanted to try <laughs> um, didn't really prove it myself normally um, you want to be a bit further back but ball our sniper wanted to get something uh, get a pick or something really far forward. I think he actually does survive. Yeah, he's coming up through there. But basically, you see the setup. You don't defend A in a competitive steel. There is no point. It's really hard to defend. You have to split your forces up between the two points. So you just defend B. We've got our sentry here. We've got our heavy holding up top. Um, our demo is just going to spam through that doorway to make sure that you know nobody can walk through for three for free. And uh, our sniper is usually watching there, but our sniper gets backstabbed. So we've already lost a bit of sniper pressure, so have to be aware of that. Our dispenser goes here because, you know, it's a good thing to fall back to. Um, our pyro, you can see our pyro isn't peeking. He doesn't want to take free damage, does he? He's just kind of checking for spies, walking around, and making sure he's not in the uh, danger. But you can see we're rotating here now. We're rotating because our flank, that's our scout, our soldier, um, our spy, have told us that... Um, they're coming in through the E point. So there you go. I milked the Uber a long time there. I realized I wasn't in too much danger simply because I was taking damage. I was weak, but there was no way for them to actually hit me. So I'm able to use the, the Uber at the last second there. Um, I'm checking my back every now and again. I should be checking it more, I feel, um, simply because a spy would have a good opportunity here. But yeah, my, my priority here is to try and heal my demo and my pyro because they can deny stuff. But yeah, we lose, um, we lose our our demo which is really not good <laughs> but their demo is kind of locked out here he's he's locked out on the far side so as long as we've got players here in this connector it's very very difficult because obviously on steel you can capture the E point at any time the more points you control the quicker it caps um, and the easier it is to access but you can cap it at any time. Now because they've only captured A, there's no bridges leading to it. So there's very few classes that can actually cap the point. They, they're only the classes that can really jump. So a demo, a scout, a soldier, even a, like a detonator pyro or, or with the power jack. So it's very, very difficult for them to cap as long as we maintain that presence in that area, which we call BC Connector. Now we're rotating around here. We've been getting the information from our team, from our engineer who's been holding on B by himself. Um, we're getting the information, okay, this is what's happening. Um, we need to rotate round. And so I bring back heels here. Now we're not being as aggressive because we know that there's a lot of pressure on the E point. So we need to go back and forth when necessary. Now I'm holding in this position here because there is a sniper sight line where Boar is about to peek. Um, so I really don't want to get sniped from the far window which is what we call east side spawn. Very complicated if you don't know the call outs to this map. I bump into a spy there, I'm like, funds, there's a spy around here. So we're just aware of that now, there is a spy in this area. The spy is probably gonna go for me because it is uh, important. We see Boar there, our sniper, he picks up the medic, he picks up the pyro. Those are two really important classes. We do lose him, but that's not too bad of a trade. The spy decided to go for the sniper instead as he was giving a, a lot of pressure. So you see, we've not actually entered the E point at all. 
We've not crossed that barrier. We're just holding in this doorway. It's very difficult for them to cap as long as we've got our demo here. He's just going to spam the point, hit them with the odd sticky, and just deny them from getting any kind of presence. And if they come close to us, our pyro is here, and he can air blast them away, and then they fall down into the pit, which is obviously very bad for them. So we lost our demo there. Not great. Lost our sniper. Not great. But we've got a level 3 here now, so that's also going to deny the point. So I'm just watching behind me. Not just for spies, but also for anyone who decides to flank around through the B point. And we lose our, lose our, our NG there to a, a reflect. Sentry gets sapped. So it's all in all, not a really good passage of play here. We've got our heavy here now. And we're just going to try to deny this as best we can. We've lost too many players. We lost our soldier and our demo. So all I need to do is keep my heavy alive here and hope for the respawns to come in so that we can contest. Because we might actually need to enter the point now. Because we don't have that presence to block the point with a heavy. He can't do damage from that distance. This is the time we decide to come in. We need to get closer. We catch out a bunch of players. They finally do use the Uber. But now we've got Sinrise here, our pyro, and he can push people into the pit. And you can see, there you go, one of their players fell into the pit, two of their players fell into the pit. It's a really easy point to control if you've got that pyro alive. It, it keeps you safe in this little connector area. Um, but as you saw, when we lose players like our demo, we have to use the Uber on something else just to gain ground. Like that heavy can't do enough damage from that distance, he has to get closer, which is why we use the Uber there. So now we're rotating back through B because... You know, they had a failed push there, and now we're getting ready for them to, you know, try to re-push B, because, you know, they've got a lot of plays. And this is really poor positioning from me. I could have died there. I probably should have died there. Um, I backed out towards the B spawn, and wasn't in a good position to do that. But Borg picking up some crucial kills there. Picks up Demo and Heavy, um, but we do lose enough players that we don't really want to fight this anymore. And we do have an Uber though, so um, apparently the call is to come in. I could have died there if that was a, you know, a close range headshot. So I got a little bit, you know, uh, you could say lucky. I'm just dodging on the point. Players are coming in, and then I finally go down there. Offer my back to the spy because uh, I was die, I was dead there anyway. Um, but we've bought a lot of time for the B point. 5.35 is a long time to capture the B point. So we're pretty happy with this situation. You see Dima there um, dying <laughs> to the afterburn of the flare gun. So now our, our interest is going to be on C point. Okay. So, you know, we've got to remember now, now that they've captured B, E point is going to capture slightly faster. Um, it opens up new routes for them to go through. They can obviously go through B point now and have access to go from B through to C, the little doorway up on the top of the cliff towards uh, towards C, just on my right here, up there. Um, that is now open, but they're really focusing E point. And we've lost a lot of places. This is really not good. Um, it's probably, probably going to lead to a loss unless we can pull off something huge here because we've just got not got the players to, to deal with it. I'm just trying to scare away the spy. I don't know why I'm trying to fight him. <laughs> Should probably be trying to... Con control the point but I hit the scout but and the spy eventually comes back for me and I think we do yeah, eventually lose the round so that was a, a good example of us losing players and being totally unable to capture E which is something that happens on the, uh, sorry defend E which is something that happens on this point um, you know it took them five what was it 535 I said to capture A and B and then they just went straight for C and it got another another minute um, if we'd not lost those players, we could have rotated through that connector and dealt with them efficiently. But because um, we lost players, crucial players like Heavy, players like Demo, players like Soldier, if we don't have those players alive, it's very difficult to block the point. It takes until the C point, so you need to capture the C point to get the bridges out. So until they've captured the C point, um, only the jumping classes that can jump quite a distance have access to the point. So it's kind of a misplay by us there. We fed a couple of players and we weren't able to defend. Usually we have a good C hold as well, and we were prepared to hold C, but you know, they decided to to rotate quickly, and we just we just lost the the wrong players. So now we're on the attack. We need to beat 635. Probably not the hardest time in the world to beat. You know, we're not too worried. But, you know, we're probably a bit disappointed mentally that we uh, we lost lost out on uh, having a really good time here. So I'm just going to stay in this little area, still considered like the spawn area, because the sniper is going to be watching this channel. I really don't want to peek too much. I want to throw the odd arrow down there, but I don't want to I don't want to present myself to the sniper just to, to give me a, a, a free death, you know. And at the moment, you can see some players are going for A. 
and they're just going to be capping out A, like we said. Maybe there might be one player there, there might be sticky traps, something like that, but in general, A point isn't defended. It's just too difficult to split up your resources. Um, so we're sending most peoples down to B, and this is essentially a suicide wave, like you do on payload, where you throw some players in towards the medic and you try to get a pick. Now, at the moment, we're just feeding the, uh, the sniper. He's getting a lot of kills. I really don't want to peek here because I know what he can do. I'm just trying to throw some arrows to people to keep them in a fight, but we're losing people. We're not really getting much of a, a reward out of our suicide wave at, two, at the moment. Um, so again, just trying, to, just trying to hit these arrows to keep people you know, buffed. Um, but this channel is very, very difficult. We've already lost a minute and we're wasting time here. And this is where people start to get frustrated. If you're in a team in a situation like this where you're trying to push a point, and it takes too much time and you know no ubers have been involved you start to think okay maybe we just need to uber in exchange and get something else done but it's very difficult on this point to do that because as long as that sniper is alive he can just shoot down this wet this channel and uh, and deny us from getting anything done so i'm just trying to buff ball here see if he can get something done um maybe get a sniper pick once the enemy sniper but like i said we're just we're just feeding him a little bit at the moment if everyone ran in at the same time and just overwhelmed him, then, you know, he wouldn't be able to, you know, kill everybody. So this is a, a bit of a misplay. We've already lost two minutes out of this. So this is really, really bad. Um, finally, we get a pick. We get a pick onto the demo. And that's enough for me to just say, okay, let's go in. Um, no demo means no sticks. I can pop nice and late. I have to flash Sinrise here to keep him in. Otherwise, he's going to die. I have to flash our demo. And I say to my demo, I'm leaving. I'm not with you. But we do kill the pyro as well. So this is an opportunity for us to get in, I feel. Sinrise is just cleaning up the spy here. Um, this is not a brilliant permission for me to be in, but it's not the worst. I'm nice and well protected there. And because I knew my team was fighting um, and they actually had good ground on B, um, I was able to come in pretty much for free there. If you back out there when you've not got a lot of players and the enemy team is quite close, you're just going to get screwed because there is no escape. It is just a dead end. Um, so try not to get yourself backed into that corner unless you know your team is safe. But as you can see there, we're capping B and we're already getting aggressive onto this point here. We've got a little cap time on E just to distract them. That's a good thing on this on this, uh, on this this map is that if you're capping one point and you get somebody who's got the ability to get a little bit of cap time onto E, it helps. And you can see we've got times three on E at the moment. I'm This is not a great position for me. Um, I could have died there because... I was stuck in that little corner. I didn't really want to be there, but our scout is trying his best to, to get lots of cap time onto E. I'm giving him an arrow, and then I have to quickly switch over back to my minigun. Those situations are just horrible as a medic when you get your arrows out, and then suddenly you take a, a buttload of damage. So I do die here. I should have been further back. I knew that they were going to have Uber at some point. Um, but you can see we're getting so much cap time onto E. You see how much cap time we've got on E? It is absolutely insane. And even if we decide to go back and start doing a C push, this is really good. So what I've got to do here, you can see, like I said, the jumping classes. We've got all the players. All we need now is the scout on there as well. There he is. And we've got the four classes that can capture. And as you can see, if you can just overwhelm and control the spawns there, um, it works really well. So that's not really a conventional way of playing steel. Usually you want to block down other spawns, but because of the way that the passes of play moved there, and it looked like we were pushing into C, kind of off the momentum of capturing B, um, we start to go through that connector, which is called sort of BC connector. Um, we go through there, and we exchange the Ubers. So me dying there wasn't brilliant. I could have backed out to B, but even if I had backed out to B, um, it, it wouldn't have been great because I would have probably been solo and had to regroup. So um, the thing about Steel before I switch on to the second round, the thing about Steel to know is that when you capture the points as the attacking team on blue, then your spawn times get faster. So once you've captured A, your spawn time's faster. You capture B as well, it's faster. By the time you've captured the C point, your spawn times are basically instant. So that as soon as you die, you respawn straight away. And the same kind of happens for the defensive team, but on the opposite end. So the more points that get capped by the blue team, the longer your respawns as the red team. So once you've captured C point as the blue team, your spawns are instant. The enemy team spawns are something like 20 to 25 seconds, depending on you know the moment that they die. So it's really important as the defending team to keep your players alive. And as the attacking team, it's not too bad sometimes to die as long as you get a good exchange out of it. So that's something to, uh, to kind of remember heading into the second round, um, which I'm going to start up now. And here we are. This is the second round. 
I'm starting on Vaxnator. Just popping some bubbles in the pregame. You gotta level up that strange Vaxnator somehow, right? Um, so this time, obviously, this is the second round, so the roles are reversed. We're attacking first. We'll be setting the time, and then the uh, enemy team will be uh, trying to beat that time, sort of in the in the reverse. So we've kind of learned from our mistakes. I feel I think we showed a really good attacking presence on um, after we'd captured the B point, but getting into B was a bit of a difficulty. So we've kind of been speaking about that in between and just saying, "Hey guys, what was the problem? Um, you know, why couldn't we capture B?" Just getting my medigun ready now. And just kind of looking at those those points and just addressing. That's really important in Highlander. In ETF2L, well, um, you have uh, either two maps, or if it's a map like this, you play a best of three. So it's really important in between rounds, if you've won, if you've lost, to address what went wrong in the previous round and see what's going on. So you can see we're sending loads of people there to... Um, to be just trying to all go at the same time I'm trying to get an arrow in there but I miss um, the player who's actually I can see the little the little you know healing icon but can't actually see who it was that needed the heals um, so yeah some people capturing a usually scout and NG are the safe players to capture a scout gets double time capturing engineer really can't do much on the B point he's kind of um, not useless, but it's really difficult for him to actually have an effect on these suicide suicides. So this time, we're deciding to go up the stairs. We dislodged the heavy that was up here, and now we're going up here, and we used quite early. I'm not sure if we got a force. It doesn't look like we did. The enemy has Uber. So I need to back out. Just back through the choke. Make sure I keep players alive. Now, crit heals on our heavy. He can go in up top, and he's going to do so much. He's going to bring up so much attention. He drops down now because there's so much space available to him. I want to get in here. Now, he takes takes the headshot. That's not great. I miss an arrow. Not great. Um, but we still have... We're in through the choke, and we force them to be playing passive. I'm just watching this drop down because so often something can come down there and really mess up your day. But we're in here. This is a really good position for us. Even though it seems we're on the low ground and everything, we're through that choke. We force them back. There isn't a sniper watching me. Um, so we can now actually, you know, take this space. And I'm just waiting here, you know, get my, get my, sorry, my heavy up with some crit heals. Help my pyro out with this fight. There's a sandwich there. I'm going to pick that up. Miss the air arrow. <laughs> Not good day for arrows, it seems. And uh, we actually absolutely bust it through that. So that's really good. Sometimes people make the mistake on maps like this and even on payload that once you've Ubered in and you don't automatically kind of win that fight and kill everything, that you have to back off and, you know, reset to your default position. No. What we did, we stayed in. We had good ground. We had good position. We just waited until our respawns came in. Now we've got the B point. We've got some pressure on E, which is dividing the enemy team's attention. Because of the stuff that was happening on E, we're basically allowed to walk into C for free. Now, it's only Heavy and the Pyro that's really good at denying anything kind of trying to kill me, but it's not very good at getting any offensive picks. We really want our demo here because he can lock down the spawn because he can put sticky traps on the spawn, which is just behind me. We capture C, and like I said earlier, capturing C is really important because once you capture C, those bridges extend towards the E point. It allows every class access to that final point. So we just roll it over to D now, seeing as we had the momentum and a lot of them were dead, we go all the way through past their spawn, onto D point and we're getting a lot of time here D point doesn't really get any more benefits to us we've already got extremely fast spawns and bad spawns for the enemy team but it does um, you see there I, I was not really paying attention to what my demo was doing maybe I switched off a little bit there um, and then he does actually die to a, a body shot which is not great um, yeah so I should probably have been healing my demo there and I died to the uh, the soldier so yeah, I should have been healing my demo, not healing the people on the point, because when you're capping the point on steel, um, you're important, obviously. But the more important thing is um, healing the people who are locking down the spawn doors. We're getting so many kills here, you can see on the kill feed, we've got a lot of kills. Um, I'm trying to yell at my demo, there's a spy! And it does, uh, does work out well. So we've got a lot of kills, and now it's time to get some people on the spawn. We can see there is an engineer up there. Our soldier jumps him. He's going to get some pressure on him, and he does die to our demo in the end. And now this is this is the situation where we've got people spread out, and some people capping. So we've got some people capping, some people watching spawns, some people watching these choke areas. Our heavy's up in this top area up here. Doesn't need an arrow, silly. Um, uh, you've got to watch out for this lower area. Some people call it toilet or sewage. I'm not really sure what other people call it, but 
um, and I'm not sure why some people call it toilet either but yeah that lower area um, is often missed give an arrow to bore there I'm trying my best to keep him alive and then I save him uh, medic DM and he wants an arrow but yeah you can see I'm just playing around the point as a medic um, my heel beam is it's stretchy as a medic you gotta remember you know your heel beam is quite long cheeky little loop there and um, then we get it 425 which is a fairly fastish time we could have done it faster um, but we're pretty w happy with the way that went down but like I was saying as a medic your heal beam does stretch out you don't need to be right next to the person you're healing give space between you and them because if they take damage you don't want to be taking that same damage you don't want to be uh, you know taking damage uh, you want to be in a safe position and in a position where you're able to retreat. If I stand on the point there, I can heal people watching the uh, the white room. I can heal people watching um, the the eastbourne. I can heal people watching the BC connector. And that way, if there's a danger, if there's an Uber coming in, I can Uber the appropriate person. I don't want to be stuck on one of those sides healing somebody because then if they come, if the enemy comes from the opposite side, let's say we don't get the call from somebody, then it's very difficult for me to transition across the point and it puts those people on the point capturing in danger. You really want to keep those people alive. You just want them safe and away from everything. So you see, we're building up the defense here. One point I didn't uh, kind of go on on D was the fact that capping D doesn't really open much for you, but it denies the spawns for the enemy team. And it's very, very difficult for them to get access to the E point once you've captured D because it blocks off their main uh, e-spawn door so it's not really a nece necessity you see a lot of people just going to capture e after capturing c but if you have the momentum and you have the possibility to do that then absolutely you can split your defenses and you can really just you know um, handicap the defending team as best you can and that makes it very very difficult for them to get access to e points here as you see we're just playing normally here same kind of setup we do lose our heavy up top so we don't have that top pressure and that's something to be aware of and it does look like um, some people were rotating I'm not sure what we were doing here. I think the team was doing some sort of a, a weird strat um, a disky with a sticky trap does take down a few players it takes down three players um, and we kill a bunch of people trying to rotate through e um, and I wasn't with them. I guess they wanted to do something. I can't remember what our strap was there. I think it had a sticky trap up, and you know, we, me and Sinrise were like, "Hey, we're just gonna we're just gonna chill on B. This is where they need to come as well." So they can, of course, go straight to E. It takes about um, 40 seconds for the E point to cap fully. So there's still plenty of time for them to do this. We lose our energy and we lose our sentry as well. So we may have to be prepared here to take an Uber exchange. I take too much damage. I drop my pyro. That's absolutely awful. He is really important here. I'm trying to flash my sniper, which is probably going to be the death of my heavy. My heavy's picked up two players, sniper and pyro. Two very important classes. Um, so that's probably a good exchange. Um, I should have probably reconsidered whether I wanted to go back and flash our sniper there. He could have just got back to a, a safe position and not been in any danger. Um, and I could have just kept my heavy alive. Um, he could have maybe picked up more. So that's that's something I need to work on. Make sure I don't flash people who, who really don't need it in the fight. But we're back to like this default behold now. Um, we feel that they might try to pressure this again. But the thing is, when the time starts running out, it becomes essentially impossible for you to capture B and then C and then D. And then they have to focus on the E point. So we need to be prepared to rotate at any time. And like we said, there we go. We're rotating through BC now because um, we feel that they're going for a, a C point. I'm, I'm <laughs> I see the spy, I yell it, but it's very difficult as a sniper, I guess, when you're, when you're scoped in to react to that. So at the moment, me and Sinrise are kind of in between two welds here. We're just kind of going in from B and C. Then we come in, and we know that they don't quite have Uber yet. So I get launched in there. That's really unfortunate. Um, and I die. That's just really unfortunate. I think it must have been a sticky that launched me in. Um, but we're fighting. Funz is calling. I'm coming in from drop down. Uh, Dima's using his conch. Really good communication from my team there. I mean, me dying is not great. It's just really unfortunate timing, but our Uber managed to get those guys in. Dima and Sinrise, our soldier and our pyro, just launched in there. Did so much damage to everyone else. That meant the respawns, like our heavy, our demo, are able to come in and just start cleaning up. And then later on in the fight, having that conch available to us, as well as our scout coming in from behind, just really good uh, timing and communication from our team there. Um, so we're backing off. 
one minute to go and this basically means it's uh, it's essentially impossible for them to capture the point now and win the round unless they get somebody on point now they really need people to get on the point within you know the last minute otherwise it's impossible so then I'm gonna go for a spy frag because you know there we go <laughs> we get it so now we're just, just for, for safety's sake, and for this is what you would normally do if you're holding right room, hold this area, which is essentially the uh, the A, this is holding A side. And then I'm like, uh, Disky, there's people behind me. And uh, somehow I survive. <laughs> Carl's on the brass beast. So I'm like, okay, for the last 20 seconds, let's do a spy uber. And um, Toast can't really get anything nice <laughs> for a, he get, Okay, no, he does actually, he kills the engineer and then he gets a backstab. Um, but yeah, this is pretty much dead time. But like you can see, that's where you would hold if you want to prevent them from really rushing in and getting a um, a push onto E, because this is one of the main areas to get through. This area and the area we're holding before that we called BC. Those are the two major access points towards B, uh, towards the E point, BC connector, and the A side spawn through. Um, through white room so those are really the areas that you want to lock down um, it was kind of irrelevant for us because in that situation uh, we'd, we'd already won the game uh, but there you go that is CP steel very complicated and I'm sure most of you who maybe haven't played the map before in a competitive sense are like wait AB what BC huh like it's understandable and maybe I'll do there's some great map talks actually Carl who I was playing with there um, he played for my team last season, but he also plays for DK, obviously, in the North American scene. And he's got some great uh, sort of map talks and explanations on the map. So if you ever want to learn more about the map uh, from a medic point of view and the way that my team play, good, good, good reason to kind of watch this video. But also check out Carl's map talk. It's really good. Um, and that gives you a lot more understanding about the map and maybe kind of understand why we were doing certain things at certain times. Uh, but thank you for watching, guys. There'll be more maps analysed in the future. I'm trying to decide which week I'm going to look at next. But I hope you've been enjoying the series. I've had some good feedback. And as always, if there's anything else you want me to do in these videos, kind of anything different you want me to talk about certain things that I'm doing at certain times, just let me know in the comments, please. But thanks for watching, guys. Take care, and I'll see you next time.